Hello and welcome to Ask a Paleontologist. I'm Dr. Scott Persons and I've just come back from a dinosaur hunting expedition into Dinosaur Provincial Park. That, that's why I look so scruffy. Anyway, it's high time we get another video out there. So, this question comes from down there in the comment section. Uh, Warrior King Forever writes, was Spinosaurus bipedal or quadrupedal? Well, that is a fascinating question. It's also something of a controversial question with a lot of paleontologists feeling very strongly one way or the other. So, this is Spinosaurus, although the animal may actually not have looked a whole lot like this particular model. We'll get to that in a moment. Anyway, Spinosaurus is a kind of very large carnivorous dinosaur from the Cretaceous of Africa. In fact, it may be the single largest carnivorous dinosaur of all time. Some estimates of Spinosaurus put its length at over 15 meters, and some estimates of its weight put it in at over 10 meters tons. That would make it even larger than Tyrannosaurus rex. But Spinosaurus belongs to a larger group of dinosaurs called the Spinosaurids. And within that group you can find other famous dinosaurs, critters like Baryonyx and Suchomimus. In a lot of ways, Spinosaurids are a kind of carnivorous dinosaur that look as though they were trying very hard to be crocodiles. Like a crocodile, Spinosaurids have a elongate snout with very narrow jaws, and those jaws are filled with a lot of tall, conical teeth. And those teeth lack or have a reduced number of tooth serrations. And you'll remember from our hunter and scavenger video that tooth serrations are those tiny little bumps on the cutting edge of a tooth that help it to slice through meat. Well, lacking tooth serrations mean that Spinosaurids were not particularly good at ripping and slashing their way through flesh, but it means they were probably very good at spearing and piercing. And teeth like that are just what you want to have if you're going after, if you're trying to capture and hold on to very slippery but relatively small aquatic prey. And we know for sure that some Spinosaurids did have a taste for seafood. And we know that thanks to preserved stomach contents, the fossilized remains of Spinosaurid last meals that are preserved within their rib cages. For example, in the European Spinosaurid Baryonyx, we have found the bones of multiple fish. But that's not to say Spinosaurids only ever ate aquatic prey. In fact, Baryonyx, its stomach contains both fish and the bones of some very large herbivorous dinosaurs. So Spinosaurids had a taste for both surf and turf. Spinosaurids may have had another adaptation to help them tackle aquatic prey as well. They've got unusually long arm bones, and their arm bones are also very stout, suggesting that their front limbs were extremely strong, and their fingertips end in some particularly nasty claws, especially the thumb. The hand claws of Spinosaurus were long, hooked, and may have been an extra weapon to reach out and grab hold of aquatic prey. Because their arm bones are so massive, it's been argued for a long time that maybe Spinosaurids were unique amongst carnivorous dinosaurs in that they occasionally got down on all fours. And as far back as the 80s, depictions of Baryonyx can be found like this one, showing the animal resting on all fours. And it was hypothesized that, well, maybe like a grizzly bear, Baryonyx stood on all fours by the water's edge, reached in from there, and getting down low on all fours would have been helpful too if you wanted to get your jaws down towards the water. 
But recently, the idea that Spinosaurids, at least some of them, and in particular Spinosaurus, walked around on all fours has gained a lot more traction thanks to the discovery of some more complete Spinosaurus specimens. Now, Spinosaurus itself is unusual even by Spinosaurid standards. It gets its name from the elongate neural spines of its dorsal vertebrae, meaning that processes on the upper part of its backbone stick way the heck up there. And collectively, these neural spines form a single long sail or dorsal ridge, the function of which was probably the same as very similar structures that we can find in some of today's chameleons. That is, the sail was probably a social courtship display structure. I said at the beginning of this video that Spinosaurus may be the largest carnivorous dinosaur, and that's because we're really not sure just how big it was. And that uncertainty comes from the fact that we're still missing a good, relatively complete Spinosaurus skeleton. The original specimen was actually blown to bits in World War II, but in 2014 we got a better idea for the general shape of Spinosaurus thanks to some additional discoveries. And you may have seen illustrations like this. This is a diagram of known Spinosaurus parts. The known bones are in red and the unknown bones are in blue. A couple things really jump out at you. First off, you can see how impressive the sail really was, but also take a look at the back legs. They're super duper tiny and so is the hip. With back legs like that, it's hard to imagine Spinosaurus could have stood on just its rear legs even if it wanted to, and the animal may have been totally forced to get down and support part of its weight on its strong front arms. But not everyone's totally sure that's the case, and that's because of this illustration. This comes from that same paper, and here you can see there are a lot more colors. Again, the blue bones are unknown, but all the other colors indicate what particular specimen the bones came from, and that really goes to show you just how much mixing and matching and piecing together had to be done from numerous specimens. That may be a little bit problematic, particularly because some of those specimens were juveniles, and when you go to scale and try to make things fit, you can't be totally sure something isn't a little bit off. For that reason, some paleontologists think maybe the back legs weren't quite as short as they appear in a lot of modern depictions. But regardless, it is clear that Spinosaurus had surprisingly short back legs. Having reduced back legs is actually an adaptation you'll see in a lot of aquatic animals. The limbs tend to get short. Think about the difference between a duck and a chicken. The toes of Spinosaurus also appear adapted to help it swim. Its foot claws are really strange. Normally carnivorous dinosaur toe claws are longer and have a stronger curve to them. Spinosaurus toes though, they're fairly short, they're fairly broad at the back, and they've got a very flat undersurface. Claws like this would not have been good at kicking out and scratching at an animal, but they may have been perfect for helping the dinosaur dino paddle its way through the water. Another surprising adaptation is just how dense the bones of Spinosaurus were. Normally a carnivorous dinosaur's limb bones have got a lot of hollow space in them, but not Spinosaurus. Its bones were really dense, and that extra bone density may have helped it to sink down into the water. A good adaptation if you want to dive down low in pursuit of fish. So there you go, Warrior King Forever. Spinosaurus may very well be a quadrupedal carnivorous dinosaur, and it was certainly a highly adapted aquatic dino predator. If you've got a question for me, send it to me in the comments below. Now, Warrior King actually asked me two dinosaur questions. The second was, what color was Tyrannosaurus rex? And the answer is, I don't know. There's no scientific evidence indicating what particular color T-Rex might have been, so anything's possible. No! Well, maybe.